So now, when we go back and have a look here, we've configured our camera, our Samsung camera, okay, which is our front camera. When we go to recording, that's our IP address, our port number, our web port that the, the camera uses, the username and password of the camera. The media profile that will be used is for recording. This is our live visualization. Currently, our Digifort uses, it's, uh, it accesses via relay server, okay? And it relays the second stream directly from uh, the camera that we've configured here. But the Digifort surveillance, uh, the Digifort server will then relay that information to your, the client. The next option is motion detection. A lot of the cameras on the market support uh, their own uh, sensitivity and configurations within the web browser. Or if you like, you can also choose to select and configure the sensor or the sensitivity all from the Digifort uh, software. So here, as you can see on my image, I can select a particular area. This is the area that will be used to detect the motion. I can right click and take the area out. I can have multiple areas like so. Okay, if I have you know trees located in a particular area and I don't want it to be de um, detected, then that will also uh, stop it from being detected. By default, if you leave it clear, the whole area is selected. If I press the test options, it will bring up a uh, the image and it will also provide me uh, with a little status bar here when motion is detected. So you'll see the motion go through and the motion will be green and it'll also give you a little indication via a little red box here to say that there is motion walking past. So I'm going to save this. You Here you can change the sensitivity levels. See, 80%. By default it's about 80%. Now this is used the motion uh, detection by an external notification. So that's by the camera itself. Some, cam some cameras, like I said, like maybe a Samsung camera, you can set up multiple zones, multiple areas, different sensitivity levels. So you've got the freedom of choice what you choose to do with the, um, with the recording or the motion detection. If the camera supports PTZ, this is where you set up all your presets. So you can set up your presets, you can set up your patrols, you can set up your day patrols, your night patrols, which I'll show you a little bit later on. These are the IOs of the camera. So, you know, as you know, Samsung has a, an input uh, device, so you can maybe short uh, the IO, and then you can, based on that short, something will happen. So I can say short um, event uh, siren will sound. Okay, when I add that, it will ask me port 1 will be short, open, configure action. So here, now I have the flexibility to choose what action I want to do based on that short. So I can send an email, I can configure my email, and then I can uh, put my alert group, I can put in the message, or what information would come up through the message, okay, and you will receive that uh, in, in an email. <clears throat> You can also personalize it for an SMS. Digifold also has the flexibility to send out SMSs from, you know, after sending out an, using an SMS portal, um, which will, you know, you send an email and then it will convert it to an SMS. You can schedule it. So if you don't want to be notified uh, during, you know, the odd hours of the day, sorry, not of the odd hours of the not, uh, day, if you don't want to be annoyed during hours of operation, which is from, say, 9 a.m. to, say, 6 we can deactivate that. So between them hours, it will not send you an email. It will only send you the emails from you know outside of the biz I mean outside of business hours. And you can also copy that the Monday schedule to the Tuesday. So here, I'm going to copy from Monday to Tuesday. See, and then here Wednesday, I've just hit the enter button, and I've done that now for all days. But Saturdays and Sundays is an important day because we're not at work. So. We activated it all day for Saturday and Sunday. So let's press OK. That's one one output alarm configuration. Next one, select the camera. So we can make a camera pop up on the screen. It could be popped up on one surveillance client. It could be popped up on a particular group or a particular user. That's based down here on your configurable users. And once again, with every action, you can also create a scheduled time. Alarm, you have... Uh, 18 alarms to choose from being all different as you can see here okay alternatively you can also change the duration of how long the sound goes off for
you can send an instant message to the operator computer. So if there's a uh, an operator user that uses it 24 hours, seven days a week, you can configure a message and you could say, watch this. Important. And then put that. And then what will happen is, it will automatically uh, send the will automatically send the operator that's viewing the Digifort surveillance client that message when an alarm happens based on a short. Request written confirmation to the user. This one here is a good one because it forces the user to write the confirmation. So if me being an operator and something pops up, it requests me to type something in. I cannot close it unless I actually write something in okay, to the box. We can demonstrate that later, a little bit later on with a global event. We can activate presets, whether it be one preset or multiple presets, from one camera, this camera, or another camera. So it can even turn and face this camera's direction. We can activate an alarm output. As you know, uh, there are a lot of alarm input-output control boards, like uh, the Axis one and the Combox one. So you can use any alarm output box and configure an action based on that. Send a HTTP request. So get and post, okay, depending on the uh, URL, the username, password, and the data that you would like to pull or push through. You can create a timer event. So if it's the case that uh, a, ti a timer event means that you know that something hasn't happened or an action hasn't been uh, act like an action hasn't an alarm hasn't been action, then you can create a further. Uh, time at event after 30 seconds, trigger another event. Okay, so that's now based on just a short. Okay, and then you can also create an alarm output action. Turn on the light. So then that will use the output of the camera. And the light will turn on. Here, it determines what port. Now, obviously, this SNB7000 only has one output that we can configure. So the light will turn on. Okay. So, sorry about that. So that is the input output. This is scheduled. This is our event slash recording schedule. So this is when the transmission schedule, when it will transmit your data from your camera to your Digifoot uh, server. This is the recording schedule, which I'll get I'll get up to you, tell you why that's grayed out very shortly. And here is the event schedule. So you know when when you want your events to notify you <coughs> or recognize your alarms. So when we go back here, remember here we had use record schedule. See, right here, this is what we call the fast option. Where you can just select it, it will always record, or record by motion, it will just record by motion. If we use the record schedule and go back to our scheduling, this now becomes active. When this becomes active, I've got the flexibility to change here, always record. Between 6 and 9, record by motion. By 12 to 15, record by event, for 18 to 21, record event in motion. See here, these are our caption and our legend, and that's now what we've done. So I can also set that up, and I can copy that through. Or I can select all of it and leave it at motion. I can also copy it from camera to camera. I might have multiple cameras, but I'm going to leave it as always record. Events, these are automatic events and manual events. So if I create an automatic event, if my camera loses communication with the Digifort server, after 60 seconds of polling and realizing that, oh, the, the, the camera is not there, I can also create an alarm. The alarms are also similar to the alarms that are in the inputs and the alarms that are um, you know, for the operator. We have that flexibility to who uh, receives it, and we also can find out, you know, schedule it. That's for communication failure. The following one would be recording failure. So if the hard drive stops recording, you can make the alarm go off you know, until someone has obviously fixed the hard drive failure. If there's a particular camera that you know, it might be in a vault or something like that and someone's not allowed to go into a very important room, but they do, you can activate it based on a, a uh, motion detection and you can also set up what kind of alarm you want for the motion detection. Further to that, you can also schedule it. 
So you could say, you know, don't recognise it during the day, but after hours, no one should definitely be in that room, trigger the alarm, send me an SMS, send me an email. Like so. Image buffer, this is before and after, so the pre and post alarm. Filters, so if I have a look at my filter and I preview it, I'll just show you here, as soon as it comes up, see, I might have installed my camera upside down. So I can actually flip my camera or I can flop my camera and I can, I can actually make it the way that it should be, okay, without actually going up to the camera and reconfiguring re it. I could, might want it in black and white, I can invert it. So I've got the flexibility and it will record the way that I have set it up here because I'm in my administration client. So this is how it will record. My brightness might be too low, I mean too high. So I can bring, sorry, too low, so I might want to lift it up a bit or bring it down a bit. But the way that I configure it here, this is how it will record. These are my live visualizations. Okay, currently there's nothing in there because we haven't set that up and this is the recording. I'll show you a little bit later on what happens when we start adding users or groups here. That's the uh, authorization for that user to be able to view this camera. Disk limits. Disk limits has three options here. Limit days of recording. This is the most commonly used one because you would probably set this one up as a global thing. So all your cameras um, configure it so that you know, it records for 30 days. Then after the 30 days, it will just start uh, running in a cycle. Limit of hours, this one starts becoming tricky, and also this one here. Okay, limit of hours symbolizes like if camera one and two uh, are recording, camera one, let's say you have a very large hard drive, and camera one you've allocated say two hours of recording. Once two hours of recording is full, then it will continue to rewrite over itself. Okay. Disk limit, well, that's just a mathematical equation. If you've got two terabytes, you want to make sure that you leave enough for the C drive, and then the rest you can distribute to each camera. And privacy masking. There might be a particular area that you want to hide or, or pri make it a privacy area so that, you know, when someone logs on, that area will be blacked out and they won't be able to see what's behind here unless they log on with the admin user and do playback. Actually, let me just delete that and clear the selection. Save. So that's the configurations within a camera.